In the second instalment of Chappy Meets, I travelled to Newcastle to see city legend Willie Nonnicky. In 12 years as a player, the Scotland international played over 350 times for the club, winning the League Cup in 1976. He joined the Blues Academy in 1965. We came down and it was just paradise for me because in Glasgow it was pretty tough. Every second guy wanted to fight you. And you know me, I don't want you to get into that. <laughs> so that's why I'm a good runner. So after, after about a month of trial, they said we want to sign you. And that, well, that's how it happened. And you made your actual debut in, in 1970, I think it was. Um, can you tell us about some of the team members at that time, some of the players then? Well, I realised I could talk all day just about them. They were fantastic people. As you know, Les, the, the best players are unselfish people, good people. Oaks again. Lee. Lee again. And it's there. Francis Lee was the hardest player I've ever known. Yeah. And they talk about Norman Hunter and all that. I know Norman Hunter was frightened of Francis yeah, Lee. Yeah, he was. Then, um, like, Neil Young was, like, the, as technically gifted as anybody, mm. anybody nowadays. They talk about modern players. Neil Young was, like, touch on the ball. Fantastic and fantastic finisher. Young, it's here! Neil Young! Tony Book was an unbelievable leader. You know, I had gone through a brick wall for him and he was like our dad. Yeah. And when he was older, he was like unbelievable professional. But a very, very, very good team at the time. Ah, oh, top, top. And the, the other thing was, Les, we were unbelievably fit. We worked unbelievably hard. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved playing. And that was a big part of Man City's success. Malcolm had all these ideas. We did weights in those days. They talked about diet. And they train, we trained with Olympic athletes, so we were fit. We were as fit as modern players. Mm. Colin Bell, people like that, could have been athletes, basically. And then in 1984, you joined Oldham and, and you and Joe Royal had the most amazing and successful period in, in their entire history. I played there for like nine years and we never did anything really, but could you tell us more about the transition from player to actual coach? How did that affect you? And well, I think as you know, as I was player coach for mm. eight or nine years, and it was really good for me because you know I'm like I'm quite intense about football, so just a bit. <laughs> so coaching took the pressure off playing because I, you know, was learning all the time, and I wasn't just focused on playing. And playing took the pressure off the coaching. And how how do you think coaching? has changed from like when you were a young pro to when, when you first started coaching. How do, you, how do you see coaching's changed from, not just at the senior level, but with kids as well? Well, the game will never change, Les, as you know. The game's simple. Get it behind them, get in the box, score goals and stop the other team. Mm -hmm. But when I started, Ken Barnes, who was a great man, lovely man, was one of my first coaches, and he basically said to me, Literally, coaching is a load of rubbish. Coaching, and I thought, this is the coach telling me this. Well, something's not right here. But as I've got older, I've started to understand what he was saying, basically, because if you ask Doug Leash, Sue Innes, Dennis Law, all those people, if they were coached, they'll say no. Mm -hmm. They learned the game like you did, through experience. You, you play, 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 practice, practice, practice. And then what Ken Barnes said was you, you, you coax people. So you encourage people mm -hmm. to do what they're good at. <clears throat> and to me, it's that simple. Now, now it's getting a lot more technical. You need to have a degree in computers to be a coach. And you yeah. need to, well, almost. And then you need to be just just much more technical about it rather than common sense and courage and practice. Mm -hmm. And as, as we, we talked about earlier, I don't think young players of all ages practice enough. Because when we were young, you practiced all day, every yeah. day. In the streets or anything. Yeah, and, that, and that's the only way 
like the Argentinians, Brazilians, Africans, you're going to get world-class players. And until England just puts the time in, time in with kids and encourages them, they, they won't get world-class players. I can remember when you were coach at City with Joe Royal, I think all the staff um, and the players, I think we all knew that a lot of your stuff was very innovative and very different from a lot of coaches at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering where that came from, or was that just mainly you? Mainly from my experience as a player and how I understood A, what is needed to win at the top and B, how how to become a top player. You know, when I, in Glasgow, when I was a kid, I was an ordinary player. There was thousands of good players. And, but to be a really top player, as you know, it's more about real focus, determination, desire, mm. as well as the ability. That's Zabaleta, you know, Zabaleta, he's got those ingredients as well as yeah, technically the good. Yeah, they're, they're the main things that got him that, where he is. Yeah. I'm going to have to ask you this one. Um, <clears throat> I'll just... Uh, Gillingham at Wembley. What, are you remember, <laughs> what do you remember about that? And uh, I remember an awful lot about it. A lot about it. It was a great experience. <laughs> It was a bizarre. <laughs> well, the, day, la wasn't the last it? ten minutes was a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> we practiced with them. People at Edgy, Kevin Horlock, you know, they were great lads, a lot of fun. But they took their, their game serious. Mm -hmm. they, they were good pros, and we'd worked on being focused as you, <laughs> as you went to take the penalty. So you had to like, feel your feet on the ground, be grounded, get your attention open, relax, a couple of deep breaths, <laughs> and then just focus on the, the penalty. Don't change your mind, just be positive. But after that, I, I said to them, did you, did you remember what we talked about? And Edgy said, oh, I remember that my legs were like jelly. <laughs> I couldn't feel my legs. And Kevin Horlock, he said, I remember, but as I'm going up, I'm thinking, shall I bend it, shall I blast it, <laughs> we'll go that side. <laughs> so, but, but it was on. good, it was good that they were receptive to it anyway, and they understood, yeah. and wanted to, wanted to do it well. For me, that, that was one of the best, I mean, I've been there now 22 years, and for me, that is probably one of the best periods that I've experienced since being at the club. It was a happy club and, mm. and staff got on well together, players got on well together. It was a great team spirit in and around players and staff. It was just a great time to be there, I think. Yeah. Deafening sound, Guy Butters must score. He doesn't, he's missed. It's saved by Nicky Weaver. What are you up to now? <laughs> Apart from talking to you. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for a job, basically, mm. Les, and I'm applying all over the place. I might go back to America, but I'd like to stay in England because all my family's here in Manchester and up here in Newcastle. Would your preference be with the younger end? Uh, anywhere, Les, where it means something. You know, where to play a game you want to win. Whereas, I know with young kids, there's a, everybody's pushing it where winning doesn't matter. But for me, winning always matters, not, not like the end all and be all. The technical side, the entertainment is big, but I don't want to be in a situation where I'm taking a team and they don't really care. When I first started at Oldham, one time, one hour a week, I worked with the under 12s, and it was it was a great brunch, great bunch, and we had Paul Scholes, uh, Trevor Sinclair, yeah. a lot of top class people, and that was you know I, I love doing that. Mm. I love just being with players, you know what it's like, Les, being with players yeah. is what it's about. Well, I'm sure um, it won't be long before you do find something because of you. Uh, not only uh, are you a brilliant coach and, and a lot of people obviously know that, uh, you're a great guy and it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thanks, Les. <laughs>